My name is Mario Günther. I am assistant professor at the Munich Center for Mathematical Philosophy of LMU Munich. My paper, Learning Conditional Information by Jeffrey Imaging on Stornager Conditionals, won a Wolfgang Stegmüller Award. The paper is based on the second chapter of my PhD thesis. It appeared in the Journal of Philosophical Logic. The paper seeks to answer the question, what does a rational agent learn from conditionals? Here's an example. What should you learn from the conditional? If it rains, the football match will be cancelled. Well, you shouldn't learn that it rains, and you shouldn't learn that the match will be cancelled. But what should you learn? In the paper I make a proposal. I've been interested in the more general question of how a rational agent revises their beliefs upon receiving all kinds of information. One influential answer is provided by Bayesian epistemology. An agent is rational just in case her belief state is represented by a probability function. And she learns a proposition by updating her probability or confidence function. She learns, for example, the proposition it rains by conditionalizing her probability function on it rains. The result of conditioning is the agent's updated beliefs or better decrease of confidence. The new degree of confidence uh, gets the probability one, so the agent is fully convinced, and other propositions also change their um, numerical value. So for example, the agent becomes more convinced that, it's, that the streets are wet, and less convinced that it's sunny. Bayesian epistemologists are proud to have general answers. General answers for what a rational agent is, and how a rational agent changes her beliefs. However, there's a problem in Bayesian paradise. It remains unclear how a Bayesian agent should change her decrease of confidence upon learning conditional information. But von Frasen illustrated the issue with his Judy Benjamin problem. Judy Benjamin, a soldier, is dropped from a helicopter in a territory that is divided in two equally large halves, red territory and blue territory. So Judy is as confident that she's in red territory as in blue territory. That means her degree of confidence that she's in red territory is one half. And the same for the blue territory. Now, the whole territory is further divided into second company area and headquarters company area. So we have four quadrants of roughly equal size. So her degree of confidence that she is in each of the four quadrants is 1 over 4. Now she's dropped from the platoon and she hears the following radio message. I can't be sure where you are. But if you are in red territory, the odds are 3 to 1 that you are in second company area. Judy accepts this message. The question is now, how should she rationally revise her beliefs upon hearing the message? On van Frasen's sophisticated Bayesian account, Judy decreases her degree of confidence that she is in red territory. He, I and many others think that this is not rational. Judy's confidence that she is in red territory should remain the same upon learning the conditional, namely one half. A conditional starting with if you are in red territory does not tell you that it's now less likely that you are in red territory. A general answer to the problem of learning conditionals is hard to come by. Many have tried and failed. I wanted to solve the problem. Of course, as I said before, a Bayesian agent learns by updating her confidence function. One way to see the problem more clearly is to focus on the semantics of conditionals. What proposition is expressed by a conditional? You might think that conditionals have the truth value of the material implication. If so, a Bayesian agent sh should learn from the conditional if it rains the match will be cancelled, that it either doesn't rain or the match will be cancelled. Karl Popper showed that learning this material implication forces a Bayesian agent to decrease her confidence in the antecedent, here rain, under very general conditions. However, 
Similar to the conditional of the Judy Benjamin problem, a conditional starting with if it rains does not tell us anything about the probability of rain. So why should it be rational to decrease one's confidence in rain upon learning the rain conditional? This is part of the problem when conditionals are understood along the lines of material implications. I think a conditional if a then c simply means that c under the supposition of a. If it rains the match will be cancelled simply means that the match will be cancelled under the supposition that it rains. This is intuitive enough. The question is how can we model the supposition? Well, the conditional says this. The match will be cancelled in the possible scenario where it rains. Robert Stolnacher modeled possible scenarios by possible worlds, ways the world might be. This allows him to give a suppositional meaning to conditionals. Our conditional means that the match will be cancelled in the possible world, which is just like the actual world, but it rains. In general, a Stolnacher conditional, if A then C, is true, just in case C is true in the most similar A world. I think you learned from a conditional if A then C that the most similar A world is a C world. You learn from our rain conditional that the most similar possible world where it rains is a world where the match will be cancelled. Importantly, you learn something about the similarity between worlds. Each rain world, which is most similar to what you deem actual, is a world where the match will be cancelled. Patients neglected that conditionals tell us something about the most similar possible worlds. For the learning of conditionals, one cannot simply use the standard updating method of conditionalization. I use instead an updating method that transfers your confidence to the most similar worlds that satisfy the learned conditional. David Lewis introduced this updating method and named it imaging. Imaging a probability function on the proposition expressed by the Stolhacker conditional if A then C transfers the probability of each world to its most similar if A then C world. And this leads to the core idea of my theory of learning conditionals. An agent learns if A then C by imaging on the corresponding Stolnacher conditional. The core idea needs of course some bells and whistles. The Stolnacher conditional, for example, should be understood in a minimally informative way. Or so I argue based on a principle of conservative belief change. I also had to generalize uh, Lewis's imaging to the case where you learn a conditional with uncertainty. Recall the Judy Benjamin conditional. If you are in red territory, the odds are 3 to 1 that you are in second company area. For learning such uncertain conditionals, I have generalized Lewis's imaging in a way that is roughly analogous to Richard Jeffrey's generalization of Bayesian conditioning. I call it Jeffrey imaging. In sum, my theory says this. A rational agent learns if A then C by Jeffrey imaging on the minimally informative proposition expressed by a Stolnacher conditional. I hope this explains the title of my paper. On my theory of learning conditionals, you, you may learn a proposition that may be true or false. And I could prove that the probability of an uncertain conditional equals the probability of the consequent after Jeffrey imaging on the antecedent. This is a crucial theorem. For David Lewis showed that there is no proposition for if A then C such that the probability of the conditional is equal to the corresponding conditional probability, the probability of C given that A. Lewis's result has led many philosophers to believe that conditionals do not have truth values at all. This view is perhaps most prominently endorsed by Dorothy Edgington, but there are many others. Because of Lewis's result, other accounts of learn learning conditionals just impose a constraint on the agent's confidence function. 
often that the probability of the consequent given the antecedent is 1 or approximately 1. What is thereby learned is a conditional probability, that is a probability divided by another. It, there's no proposition to be learned here, it's just a number divided by another. However, the philosophers who believe that conditionals have no, no truth values face several problems. Conditionals like, if it rains, it rains, are true. If it does not rain, it rains, is false. Moreover, if conditionals have no truth value, it remains a mystery how they enter into truth functional compounds. It rains, and if it does so, the match will be cancelled. Sounds true to me. They claim that this compound has no truth value. It is not true, it is not false, and simply because the conditional has none. But the conditional is naturally embedded in this case and in others. Normally, conditionals embed naturally into the language we produce. And it seems that they can't answer to what seems so obvious to others. Another facet of the problem, called the frege gish problem, are nested conditionals. For example, if the match takes place inside, if it rains, the match will not be cancelled. This sounds true to me, but nested conditional probabilities are not defined. There is no probability of C given that B given that A. As my theory does not give up on truth and truth functionality, it does not succumb to the frege gish problem. To the contrary, my theory allows for the learning of arbitrary Boolean compounds, including nested conditionals. Theories of learning conditional information are assessed by their formal properties. Is the theory applicable to a wider range of conditionals? Does it apply to nested conditionals? Does it apply to also uncertain conditionals? And so forth. Another assessment criterion is whether the theory is in harmony and can be integrated with successful neighboring theories, general theories of learning, of rationality, and the semantics of conditionals. A related criterion is whether the theory under consideration is philosophically well motivated. Do conditionals have truth values? Has the theory unintuitive or more intuitive consequences? Or do its consequences even contravene rationality. Related to the last questions, theories of learning conditionals can be tested against a set of examples. These examples have been carefully developed by Igo Duren and collaborators. Together, the examples constitute a benchmark that any theory for learning conditional information should meet. However, I'm not aware that any other theory meets this benchmark. My theory also makes predictions for the Trudy Benjamin problem, which many take to be the rational ones. I hope I could give you a good idea of my theory, as well as its philosophical motivation integration with other theories. Coupled with its success in the examples and the Trudy Benjamin problem, I believe that I made a step towards a proper theory of learning conditional information. If so, I have already made some progress in Bayesian epistemology.